What's up, you sim racers out there? This is Larry at TJR Sim here, and today we are looking at a set of Corsa Competition. Did I say that right? ACC uh, version 2.0 that came out, uh, I guess, earlier in the week. Well, last week, technically, since this is Sunday, uh, the 14th. So, finally got a chance to uh, look at it and mull over it and uh, see some other other videos that kind of helped me out like gamer muscle had a video about uh bumping up the uh sampling to 200 percent that actually helped uh, so i was able to check that out and fine tune it to my liking so anyway let's dive into it i'm not going to show you the 2d screen i'm just going to jump into the vr now i am using uh the samsung odyssey so you know your fps is going to be hindered even more with that than say an oculus rift so um, but let's go ahead and dive in. So when I first opened up, uh, ACC in VR, I couldn't find my menus anywhere. So I, I, I went to steam and, and found a guy here and, uh, he posted it. Sim culture looks like, uh, so I did a copy on this one and these are the settings I ended up changing. So I just follow the instructions here. So. You know, sim community is so awesome. You can, you know, you can't find something. There's someone that's gonna want to spend the time researching something. I had a feeling it had to do with this menu distance area, and I was able to actually use the control up and down arrow keys to kind of move it up in my VR headset a little bit better. However, though, whenever I hit the F2 key that it was talking about uh, in their notes here, press F2 key in game to cycle the help HUD. Uh, it was itty bitty in the top left of my screen actually at one point it was so big that i couldn't even see it it was just you know you, you use, uh, like uh taking out a word and magnifying it by six thousand percent and that's what i was seeing so uh but going back here I, this guy he took the time to uh set up the distances so do a, a screen capture here uh, or go look at the, of course the uh, the forms for ACC there, and you'll see his post in there, Sim Culture. And uh, but yeah, these settings actually totally worked. It centered up the VR in the uh, the menu system rather in the VR headset uh, to where you could have something to work with, and you can actually change your you know your uh, your your uh, options right there on the fly while you're in VR, and actually see the results, which that's actually a really cool thing. I'll show you. Uh, once we jump into VR that um, ACC has really did a good job at, at, of doing because you can actually access your VR settings in VR and actually have a counter in VR uh, for your FPS uh, although the counter is so small I wish you could make it bigger because I literally can't see it I can barely make out the words uh, especially since it has like a magenta color or something and uh so anyway <laughs> is what it is i actually peek out of the headset and uh and look at my uh my um my counter on my screen actually to see where i'm at but follow these instructions here and where you're going to want to put them at is pretty much where you said the uh c users your name documents a set of corsa competition config file and you open up the vr settings json uh file so you know there you go same thing here and you're gonna go to VR settings double click on that I want to use WordPad and here it is uh, these settings here of course are what you change simple as that pretty easy I'll leave it up for a second there so you can do a screen grab if you want it to uh, change those and that'll center up your VR so thanks a lot for that guy that took the time to do that awesome all right. Also, now I did notice with the v, with VR came. Now I have motion rig and uh, next level racing V3 rig and love it and it works awesome. The telemetry in uh, ACC for motion is is really good, uh, really spot on. So really like that. But I had some problem with my uh, headway, my roll and pitch compensations. Now it defaults at one for both of these and um, I didn't really think about it at the time I was thinking I, I wish there was a slider that I could adjust this because when I was hitting the brakes the car was moving away from me 
uh, way faster than my, uh, my motion was actually pushing me forward. Same with accelerating and, and turning left and right. You know, it's like the car was coming into you when you're turning left, but you're not actually doing that in real life. So, uh, or at least not to that extent, right? So, uh, roll compensation and the pitch actually fixed that for me. It's still a little bit fast on deceleration. It's just right on acceleration and turning. Uh, obviously though I could uh, change how quick or how much distance my seat goes under deceleration to match it a little bit better but anyway this fixed it I changed the roll and the pitch so just a little note if you other v3 addicts out there uh, for the next level racing you know run into that issue that's what it was all right so let's dive into the game and reason I'm not going to go into the 2D as well is that uh, once I have my headset plugged in, a set of courses does not like to switch back and forth between 2D and VR. Am I running? It says I'm running. Oh, here's another issue too. So it says it's running. A lot of times I have to close out the headset, uh, the VR headset to keep it from, stop it from running so I can reload into the game. But this is the options you're going to get. You're going to get play a set of Corsa or ACC, R, ACC, and VR. Of course hit, oh, which one did I hit? <laughs> did I switch it? I did it so fast. Actually, it went to VR anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna put my headset on, and you won't see the menu that I see. Uh, actually, no, it's it stayed on 2D. Let's see. Yep, it stayed on 2D. That's what I launched it in, so. It is actually running really slow right now. That's crazy. 11 FPS. Wow. All right, um, let's go to options, and I'm going to turn the sound down. It's a cross between the mouse working and the uh, um, <laughs> using the joystick on my wheel. That's so weird. So there's definitely some bugs in this in this setup, uh, but yeah, it is what it is. I mean, it is early access right now. I think five percent was the one where you could actually hear me talking, and I just apply it. Yeah, my mouse isn't working in this particular setup. But I will show you video. And you're, you're going to want to follow the instructions and bind everything as far as your a joystick. Now, if you're running like me, the Fnatic Club Sport V2 uh, and the McLaren GT3 rim or any of the Fnatic rims, they have a D-pad on there that you can actually use and navigate. So that's, that's perfect. Well... It'll be easier to show you this way anyways. Uh, the resolution scale I have is at 200%. View distance doesn't seem to matter whether you have it on epic or low. doesn't matter. Generally in uh, VR low, low is what you want to go with because you can't see that far ahead anyway. Uh, shadows on low. Uh, and now these particular settings right here, you can see I can get 90 FPS uh, with one car in the daylight. <laughs> Uh, no rain. Uh, once it gets dark, the FPS drops around the 60s, and, uh, and that's pretty much where it holds with one car running at night. Uh, and then uh, you add rain, you're at 45 FPS. You go race on the track with these settings. Uh, with cars, you pretty much are in the asynchronous mode, 45 FPS. Uh, it climbs out every so often and then back into it. So it needs to be optimized further because okay I'm running a 1080 Ti uh, and it's overclocked as well and then uh, I'm running the the new PC build the 7820 i7 processor uh, and it's it's overclocked um, uh, four and a half gigahertz I believe is what I'm running at it uh, and you know you're still hitting 45 FPS so uh, it does look better 
in in VR if you can crank these things up and say a set of course it does. Uh, but you know you'll never get out of 45 at FPS. But anyway, these settings here, these are kind of the optimal ones that um, it, it it totes the line of looking good and and actually getting a high F a pretty high FPS. When you're racing with the crowd, uh, forget about it. You're going to be at 45, no matter really what you have on or off. Uh, that's just where you're going to be stuck at, unless you clear out from the traffic. At least until this thing gets optimized. Because even, like I said, if you had a 2080 Ti right now, you know, you're getting 20 average 25% uh, headroom over a 1080 Ti. So, you know, you're going to get, you know, roughly around 20 FPS more. So that's going to keep you out of asynchronous range. You'll be in the 60s all the time with with these settings in a race, but um, that's still not quite the optimal 90. Uh, for me, 60s fine. I don't I don't get any um, uh, motion sickness or anything like that. So uh, to me, in the 60s is fine. I can race all day long like that. But anyway, shadows on low, and uh, I wouldn't turn them on epic but i'll show you when we put the headset on and go into the headset view of it you can literally see live what the shadows and all these little settings do uh and lit anti-aliasing on high temporal is what i use for the type instead of fxaa that's very blurry looking around the edges of a pixel uh just looks looks bad try it out and see for yourself but um i would go with temporal the only thing i don't like about the temporal is that if you were to go top down looking at your car or something like that or even if when you're in vr or you're looking at your mirrors it's almost ghosting of your mirrors of of where your mirror literally was you know a millisecond ago and a millisecond ago and a millisecond ago so it has this ghosting effect on the outer edges of your car which is uh weird so you don't really notice it at nighttime or rain really so much but uh definitely in third person view you do notice it okay um, but VR, I mean, it's, you're, you're really paying attention to the race. It's not so bad, but everything looks a little bit sharper in this setting as opposed to FXAA. Now effects, uh, on low, even on low, uh, you still get to see the, the, uh, uh, sparks from, from the cars and stuff like that. So that's pretty good. Uh, and it, it doesn't just actually control sparks and stuff like that as far as effects go. It, it, it actually even seems to control like how much grass you see or how much deviations in the lawn you see with the effects uh, so the, the rendering of, of your environment is is affected by these effects so that's that's interesting uh, post-processing that's just the overlay afterwards uh, you know if if I had something to pick I would go medium on, on effects and post-processing those two you generally want to keep together uh, for instance, if you have effects on low, your dashboard looks, uh, you know, like you, you took a, a <laughs> uh, okay, the dashboards are kind of like Alcantara looking, but uh, they're very uh, knurled looking on top of them on low, but you put it to medium and they look nice and smooth. Uh, but if you had put post-processing up on medium and left the effects on low, they're still knurled looking, uh, just with a little bit better shading uh, to amplify the, the knurled look, okay? So these two you really wanna just run together uh, is my recommendation. So uh, medium on both is actually looks really good. There's really no reason to run Epic on any of these in VR. Uh, high is really the highest uh, visual effect you'll get on any of these settings, even on, on anti-aliasing. Epic doesn't make a difference between that and high uh, from what you visually can see. Uh, now, once you drop it down to medium and low and off, rather, uh, you know you see the jaggies like crazy. Uh, so high is is preferred, of course. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, sharpness doesn't make a difference. I didn't notice a difference in VR. I think it's more of a 2D screen thing. Uh, 300 percent or, or zero was was fine, but on 2D it. You know, makes a little bit of a difference there. Uh, foliage, this is your trees and stuff in the background. Literally, that is just all it seems to affect. And uh, it's, it's it tends to pull in. I want to say I saw some of the more cloud cover when I uh, started adjusting this to medium and high. 
But uh, low is basically, you see a little bit less trees. You still see the bulk of them. You just see uh, less peaks in the background and, and less uh, um, detail in them. So not really a big deal unless you're just a, a tree-loving guy or gal. Uh, texture on Epic doesn't seem to matter. The graphics card does fine on Epic. Uh, so lower Epic uh, is, you know, just leave it on Epic. You're fine. Uh, frame limit, I just put it to 100 because you, you never need to go over 90 anyway. And uh, I'm using a, a, a Predator X34 monitor. Mine's capped at 100 anyway. So uh, mirror quality low is, is good. I prefer medium myself. And the reason is, is that when you start running at nighttime, when you have it on low, you'll see the headlights behind you. But uh, at a certain distance, it really seems about, once they get about 100 feet away from you, uh, not even that far, maybe 50 feet uh, from the back of your car, uh, they totally disappear. The cars disappear. And uh, you don't know they're there until they catch up to you under braking or something. And then they all of a sudden you see a headlight in, you, in, in your rear view mirror again, blinding you. <laughs> Uh, medium seems to keep it there a lot longer until you've really trailed off from the uh, opponent behind you. So I, I prefer medium, uh, but you're not going to hit the FPS you want on medium. That's going to definitely hurt uh, for that. So, of course, this is all pre, you know, in the beginnings. This, all this stuff is going to change as VR gets more optimized uh, in the future for this particular game. So. Uh, opponent visibility, I leave it on all. It didn't seem to make a big difference besides that I literally saw cars disappear off the track as they were turning, you know, uh, maybe a, a two, three hundred feet in front of me. <laughs> and they're like, oh, they just disappeared. Uh, so I leave that all, on all. Uh, motion blurry, don't need it. I actually tried it out just to see if it would smooth out anything, but didn't make a difference in VR. And saturation on 100. And I uh, didn't really notice, you know... Uh, Actually, I didn't play with this in VR. I just left that at 100, but as far as the 2D screen, I liked 100. It looked fine. Okay, so those are the settings there. Uh, other things you will notice in controls now. Let me see. Oh, it's freaking out. It's freaking out. Weird. Okay. Let's see if I can go back. It's a little buggy. Control. Uh, let's see. Maybe back one. Nope. Yeah, it just seems to go through all of them. Ah, I'm trying to get the force feedback. And let's see if it can do it. My mouse is not letting me. There it goes. <clears throat> force feedback uh, seems like a new one's added here road effects um, and then minimum force and dynamic dampening uh, I've heard like Gamer Muscle talking about it and I think it's probably because he has a, uh, a direct drive wheel but I literally don't notice a difference with the dynamic dampening on or 100% or 200% uh, the cars seem to drive fine I think default was 100% uh, so that's just fine uh, actually I've just been driving it with it on off and um, seems fine. I, I get the road effects pretty good through the wheel. I uh, can tell what's going on. Now the gain, I like around 85 and 90% that you see there. Uh, anything over at 100% with the V2 uh, Fanatic wheel seems to be a little bit too heavy of a steering for me to where I lose a little bit of the detail when I'm driving. Uh, road effects, uh, that's a good one there. They, I'm glad they added that. I don't recall that in the first 1.0. Uh, but I crank it all the way up to 100% and I definitely feel a lot more detail of the road surface itself and it, as well as the curving is more pronounced. It's not as pronounced as what you get in a set of Corsa. Uh, I think a set of Corsa is probably overdone in a lot of instances with some cars as far as how much road effects you feel. Of course you can dial it in and out but uh, this one seems to be just right. It seems to mimic what my uh, motion is feeling. Actually at 100% it's and it's a lot closer to what the telemetry is picking up off my motion simulator uh, than it was with not uh, adjusting it before. So uh, like that a lot. So anyway, let's go back. That's really the only, only thing I want to show you there. 
and let's exit it and I will go into the VR now sorry if this video is running long but you know what I'm covering A to Z for you bear with me this time we'll pick the right one VR and we'll go out on a single session and have a little fun the force feedback of this game is actually really good um, you, f you can really feel what the car is doing which I like a lot now when you turn on the VR uh, of course I see the Unreal Engine you know headset and you'll use the control space bar to center everything and you got this pretty cool garage and a guy's behind me somewhere there he is there back there. turn that off go to menus and you don't get to see it but since I adjust the menu setup from the very beginning, like I was telling you, uh, as far as you know your view, di your view distance and all that stuff, I'm able to roll through the menu system literally right in front of me. So I'm, about, I'm gonna just go ahead and pick a single player. We're gonna do a practice session. Uh, let me see. Bear with me, I know you can't see it. 48 times. But there's really cool uh, things in this game that uh, you don't see in other games when it gets to nighttime. Nighttime, this game really shines, I think. And I'm just going to drive it like it is. And I got to recenter like that. Now, what you can see that I'm adjusting live is the uh, the knurled dash right there, right? And I'm going to show you the difference real quick what happens as far as uh, me making adjustments and you can't see but I have actually an FPS indicator there it looks like it's in orange actually but uh, I was saying I think Jenna earlier but I think it says 57, 58, 59 yeah around 60 right there if I lift my headset up and look but you know when you look around your car it looks badass I mean you see all the little indentions you know of the stampings of the roof and all that it's just really really cool uh everything looks nice and this is with the shadows and stuff on low but i'm going to show you let's adjust things right here and i'm pulling up my menu but you'll see the effects and i'll just let you know when i'm at but we're at 200 percent now let's look at this dash right there everything's pretty well defined at 200 percent and uh, you're able to make out the end for neutral and all that uh, but I'm gonna switch it to 70 you'll see the blur effect you get around the edges of all the text and stuff there it is that's 70 percent uh, default is like a hundred I'll move it up to a hundred you get the best results at a hundred if you want to hit in the 90 FPS all the time here's a hundred and it cleans it up just ever so slightly I mean it's really hard to tell where it cleaned it up I think around 150 is probably a pretty safe setting this is basically doing your super sampling at one and a half times right uh, here's 150 boom see it cleaned it up just a little bit and you'll notice see when I turn on the I don't have no tracker control label right now but because I'm in the menu system but um, 150 cleans it up pretty good 200 let's go on up to 200 real quick or let's do this in a stage like 175 and here we go I didn't notice the difference at 175 and we're gonna go to 200 percent again I didn't notice the difference so really your point of no return I think is around 150 uh, so yeah you can go around 150 and save a few FPS that way all right, I'm going to go to shadows. Now this is on low, right? And I'm going to switch it over to epic so you can just see how much good it, how much better, how much good, how much better it looks. That's epic, all right? Everything is nice, detailed. Um Did my headset pick it? Yeah, it, you can see the difference there. It's a lot darker inside, you know, it's cutting out the sun rays from coming in cuz we're under the shade here. Uh we'll go back to low. 
boom see everything's washed out super bright looks like there's a lamp on in here right now let's go to medium and i'm going to look at the you know kind of the, my legs here you can see a difference here medium works pretty good this is going to be high high i can't tell a difference let me go back to medium medium and there's high again high now what you can't tell the difference in car between medium high but when you look out there on the track this is on medium right now let's go to high and you see in the grandstands where it changes the shadow in a little bit medium again where you see the guy with the yellow flag waving uh, the stands underneath his feet are you know look like sun's hidden it uh, let's go back that was on medium let's go on high and watch watch the yellow flag guy and then boom it looks like proper shadowing right there if you go to epic it actually changes a little bit more the top rooftop of the stands changes a little bit let's go back to high so you can see the difference uh, you see a little bit uh, like the reflection of lights up there better on high let's go back to epic now they're not lit up so ever so lightly high is really about this best you want to go uh, but anyway let's go on uh on medium i think medium is is pretty livable if you can stand it as far as losing fps now anti-aliasing let's look at that real quick uh it is on off now and you can see how look at the fit you know what let's start the car up and drive out with it like this Now here's another cool thing about VR is that you're looking down. I'm going to flip my ignition on. The guy literally flips it on, right? And then I hold it until he starts the engine. That's just cool. Put it in gear and I got motion going on. Now there is a bug. Now when I switch my traction control on, you see the little green, the number one. And then the green lights up and of course it goes across. Now if you played ACC, you already know about this, right? Um... I'm going to show you the rest of the details here. Uh, the bug with the traction control, sometimes it literally goes off. I don't know why. It always does it in freaking corners or something when I'm concentrating on, on catching the guy in front of me. And then it goes to zero and I'm spinning out. So, uh, it is what it is. Just another bug. But, okay, let's look at the anti-aliasing again real quick here. So, and, I, and I'll show you live what this stuff does. So, you can know the difference here. It's a listen is on off. Now I'm gonna hopefully I'm having to look down a little bit because it brings the menu down out of my way. But hopefully if you look at the grandstands over there and we go to just epic so you can see the biggest difference. It cleans up all the blurry edges. Uh, all the um, shimmering goes away on epic. Now this is high right now. I just switched it to high. Can't tell the difference between epic and high. Here's medium. Add some shimmering. See some shimmering on the uh, on the uh, fence there, on the metal, on the bottom of the fence there. Go back to high again. See it cleans it up. Uh, you go to off. It's really shimmering bad. I don't suggest off at all. Uh, medium would be the least amount I would run. Uh, I honestly run on high, and I'll just wait it out until. Uh, VR gets a little bit more optimized now. Here's temporal. It's on temporal and this anti-alias and type right let's go FXAA Now you see FXAA it added a little bit darkness uh, to the surrounding but It's definitely blurred edges when you're looking around. Uh, let's go back to temporal oops Temporal now and it cleans it up so all the edges of all your fencing uh your objects and stuff gets cleaned up let's go to fxaa and you can just see it adds a little bit blurriness to it all and cockpit let me see that's on fxaa let's go into temporal and you see that like the mesh on my steering wheel is uh or the alcantara on my steering wheel is a lot cleaner looking i'll go back to fxaa and now it looks like it's got it's a little bit fighting a little bit of a shadowing and a shimmer effect with it. So anyway, let's go back to temporal. That's it. All right. <clears throat> so let's see. Next is uh, is uh, effects. Let's go to. It's on low right now. I'm gonna put on epic. 
Uh, epic. There you go. Cleans up things in the background. This is low. Not a big difference actually in the background, but look at the dash. Look how clean the dash looks now. Let's see if I'm getting this in VR. Uh, okay. There you go. And the da, the da, let's see, epic. Let's go, let's go to low. And you can see the dash gets, you know, a lot more knurled looking. Uh, medium. And it cleans it up a little bit more. Looks actually pretty good at medium. Uh, high. Again, I'm having to move my head off the screen a little bit so I can see uh, it. But see, high looks pretty good. But there's not a difference between high and now that's epic. That's epic, high. You can't tell the difference between those two. But once you go to medium, <clears throat> you can tell the difference. And of course, low looks like shit. <laughs> looks real bad. Looks real bad on low. Uh, I would say medium is, is kind of your happy medium. Now, medium's going to hit, like I was saying before, medium's going to tax your FPS a little bit. So keep that in mind. But as far as it looking good, I mean, you can live with it on low just so you can get some more FPS when you're out there on track racing. Uh, so yeah, that would be my recommendation. If you want to hit the highest FPS possible, keep everything on low, keep your, uh, resolution actually around 150 and your, uh, shadows on low like that. And your anti-aliasing, I would leave it on high because I'm able to run anti-aliasing on high and all these others on low and still get uh, 90 FPS on the track by myself. In this particular lighting uh let's see let's go back and put shadows on medium because it's what i like uh here is post processing on medium and what you notice down on medium looking around I'm, I'm gonna look down there at my console right uh here's low and you see how the light just comes flooding in with the post processing overlay on low basically almost off really i'll go to epic there's epic and a lot more detail in the um, sheet metal of the floor line there with Epic. High, or I'm sorry, that's medium. High, you can tell a difference. Uh, Epic is a little bit better than high. Not much difference. That's high right there. Uh, but look at the shadow in the corner there by the door uh, when I go to Epic. And it just brightens it up a little bit, adds a little bit more detail to it. But on high, looks a little bit washed out uh, medium now this is medium medium oh, I'm sorry that was low medium and eh, it's a good happy medium at medium between medium and now high you get like a little bit of a blue tint with the high compared to medium medium has more of a natural color to it to me now if I change the effects to medium <clears throat> you can't tell as far as in car goes Except for your dash. Uh, I'm looking at my dash now on low. Uh, looks more grainy on low. Got a medium. Uh, looks a lot cleaner and smoother. So I think medium, medium is the way you should go. Like I said, sharpness doesn't matter. Foliage, that's on low. Check out those trees far away. I'm going to put it on epic. And you will see epic. I'm going to go back to low. I don't see no difference now. There's high, medium, low. Huh, it may be because I need to reload the game, but literally what happened before uh, is when I was at Epic, you had more peaks to the trees out there. Uh, and then when I went to low, you basically didn't have the peak at all. I suggest it go on low because you know, you're racing on the track, you're not out in the jungle, okay? Um, it's not Forza Horizon 4. <laughs> uh, texture doesn't matter whether you're on low, you can look at it yourself. That's low or epic. Looks the same. Again, mirror quality. Now this one makes a difference. Look at the mirror there. That is on low, medium. You pull in a few more details back to low. Low, so you have some reflection in the mirror there on the right. Uh, just artificial reflection, uh, like it's wet or something there. So that looks bad. Again, when you're running on the track, it's not going to matter as much as long as you can see the cars. But I suggest medium, which that's medium. 
Let's go to high just to show you. High pulls in more detail. You see the grandstands behind you properly. Go back to medium. Grandstands are washed away. It looks like the sky, basically. You just see flags and stuff waving, but there's no one there, you know? It's just people, but no stands. They're like standing in the air. <laughs> uh, so we'll go back to high. They sound, they look good. Looks like proper stands. Epic, let's see. Epic basically pulls in the banner back there that's going to the signage that's going across the track. Uh, it's epic. I'll take it off the high. High, you see it go away. Uh, I say mirror quality on medium, and the reason I say that is it's a good happy medium uh, because as you get further away, you're not really checking your mirrors a lot, but like I said earlier, um, well, in VR, you're checking them a lot, but you're just checking it for cars. You're not necessarily. <clears throat> trying to check what's you know where the hell you're at past the stands right but with it on medium at least you get to see the uh headlights in your mirrors properly and it doesn't um it doesn't look retarded you know uh they don't just disappear uh after they get 50 feet off your bumper so uh medium is what i would suggest for that and that's really about it let's go ahead and run the track uh, I'm gonna leave it with these settings here and you'll see uh, what I'm getting FPS wise And actually we'll let it run till we go into the night too Turn off my F2 You get pretty good shadow in effect. Whoa My traction control must be off, huh? You get good shadow in the car here uh, with the settings. What's my FPS? 51. That's not bad. I don't mind as long as I'm not in asynchronous mode. But if I'm in asynchronous mode, I don't want to come out of asynchronous mode because it it tends to jack with you when you're moving back and forth between the modes. And I think that's really what gets people sick. Great shadowing across the car. Uh, one neat effect is when we go to nighttime, you will see, uh, so you got a helmet cam, right? Well, the particular view I'm in right now is if you have the helmet on, but you don't see the helmet around you. I'll switch it to the other one. This is now you see the helmet around you, which is pretty cool, but it's, I shouldn't be able to see through part of the helmet uh, that I'm seeing through so it, it needs to be a solid figure so they need to fix that of course uh, because that's kind of well it's very distracting actually the helmet moves with me like it's supposed to but at the top of the helmet I'm looking at the top not driving well um, and you know you lean in and the helmet goes with you and stuff you can't see it as far as I don't think you can see it on screen uh, but you can see it in the uh, VR headset you can see it on screen if you adjust it far enough out with your view settings. But yeah, it's just a little bit wonky. Oh, there we go. There's the temporal effect. See how the back of the car looks ghosted? Uh, that's what I'm... See if you can see that. Yeah, you can see it on your screen, on the 2D screen. That's the te temporal effect. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, that actually is better than FXAA effect because... You know, the only time you really see that is is when you're doing this particular view. You know, it's, it's almost like it's in a wind tunnel. <laughs> you're seeing that effect, so it's crazy. Let's go back into the car. All right, this looks normal. But as far as, you know, what you feel with the telemetry, tele telemetry rather, words, you know, words, uh, it feels really good with motion. Now I turned off the t uh, tactile uh, effect right now because uh, you wouldn't be able to hear me. But the motion can go and you can still hear me. Starting to get a little sun's going down. Oh, what I was saying about the the helmet, sorry, got sidetracked there. Is when you have not even when you have the helmet on but just in this particular view you have the lens flare like right there you have a little bit of lens flare 
on the screen of your helmet, on the visor of your helmet rather. And uh, it looks pretty cool because it's, you know, it's like a little, it's like looking out the side window right here. In certain lighting, it looks clear, but when the sun hits it, uh, this plastic, you know, you see the imperfections in the plastic and stuff. So, pretty neat. Um, you notice it more when the sun's hitting you in the eye, and then it obviously, you also notice it more when uh, nighttime driving, when the headlights are reflecting off your mirror and then of course across your uh your visor on your helmet so pretty neat let's drive into the night I have the uh, day cycle on 48 times right now. They do a real good job with uh, the lighting on the track too as, as it changes from, from daylight to night. It's actually pretty impressive. If they can just get the efficiency of of it up, you know, out of the 45 FPS range and and be hitting the you know 90s and something, you know, that'd be great. Because right now it just dropped to 39, now 45. Let me turn my headlights on. There's the headlights. Oh, there, there's the headlights. That's the blue light inside the car. That looks really cool. Uh, really neat effect there with the blue lighting. There's the flashers. All seems to work fine. Still 45 FPS. So like you see, single track with the current settings that I have, you know, which are medium and, and uh, pretty much medium on all of them. Uh, you know, you're not going to get out of 45 FPS range. You will see in this, uh, out of the 45 FPS range in the daytime with a race, if you put everything on low and uh, the uh, scaling on 100%, then, you know, you'll be a little bit above it uh, with my particular setup. It just doesn't look as good. So anyway, that's a look at it. Um, I will note that when you get into um, the track racing, as far as doing uh, race events and stuff, when you have the other cars around you and stuff, they uh, they don't shimmer by or anything. They actually look pretty dang smooth on track um, with you racing with the guys. So it's not too bad, even with these particular settings. It, you do have a little bit of stutter uh, here and there uh, but mostly it's pretty solid as far as a smooth frame rate goes with that. So anyway, uh, share your settings, but I, I think I covered it all pretty well, uh, for what, what to expect. And you actually got to see the effects uh, of the changes being made, which is really cool about this game that you can do that. So anyway, check you next time. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you know what to do. Leave a, leave a like, subscribe and all that business. We'll see you next time on the track. I'm out.